see. Hmm. This Campbell Reese biology book ought to give me some information on DNA technology and genetically modified bacteria. What the? Plasmids, recombinant organisms, DNA, polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis. This doesn't make any sense at all. What am I to do? My seven page bioethics paper on genetically modified bacteria is due tomorrow, and I have nothing. It's already nine o'clock. Going to have to pull an all nighter. Okay, enough drama. I must start my work. But I'm going to fail. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who are you? I am the guardian angel of biology, here to teach you about genetically modified bacteria. You see, it all started in the 1950s, when Watson and Crick were the first to present their double-stranded helix model of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is made up of nucleotides, each consisting of a phosphate, a deoxyribose, and a nitrogen base. Then, in 1973, Cohen and Boyer were the first to genetically engineer a transgenic organism, thus creating genetic engineering. It all started with a bacteria. The bacteria contains genetic material, plasmids, and ribosomes. Cohen and Boyer created the first transgenic bacterium by using plasmids. First, they isolated a plasmid from a bacterium and DNA from another cell containing the gene of interest. <music> Using restriction enzymes, the DNA and plasmid are cut with the same restriction enzyme. In nature, restriction enzymes occur in bacteria and work to cut up the DNA of invading viruses. The cut made by the restriction enzyme creates sticky ends, which can hydrogen bond with complementary sticky ends on another DNA molecule. The cut plasmids and DNA fragments are then mixed together, and so the complementary strands can base pair. Now, the plasmid is recombinant. Recombinant means containing DNA from two or more organisms. To seal the sticky ends, DNA ligase is added. And thus, a recombinant plasmid is made holding the gene of interest. By 1980, General Electric was able to patent an oil-eating microbe developed by one of the researchers. But is it even right to genetically modify bacteria for whatever reason? And will the benefits outweigh the risks? On one hand, recombinant bacteria are used for a wide range of purposes, making purified proteins used in vaccines and human growth hormone. They can also be used to make recombinant proteins for more efficient animal production and improved crop yields. Furthermore, they are applicable in biomining alleviating environmental pollution recycling, and degrading hazardous substances and pollutants. 
In China, for example, researchers have used genetically modified E. coli to filter out toxic pesticides from the air. Using the genetically engineered bacteria E. coli BL21, the researchers have demonstrated average removal efficiencies of almost 100%. Another example of what genetically modified bacteria are used for is biofuel. The bacteria E. coli has been genetically modified to produce higher chain alcohols. Higher chain alcohols can provide energy close to that of gasoline, do not corrode things like ethanol, and result in less knocking in engines. As well as helping the environment, Genetically modified bacteria can help humans directly. For instance, they offer a gene therapy for cancer. This is a human colon, and inside this colon are tumors. Bacteria's natural anti-tumor activity is enhanced by genetic engineering, which lets them colonize these solid tumors. The bacteria have an emphasis on blocking tumor angiogenesis, which is the growth of new blood vessels from pre-existing blood vessels to the tumor. The bacteria act as a tool in delivery of genes and their products to the target tumor tissue. Lastly, another example of genetically modified bacteria's benefits is its effects on agriculture. In nature, bacteria usually contains a gene, ice C, which causes nucleation of ice on leaves and fruits causing frost damage to the plants. After deletions are made in this gene, the new genetically modified bacteria populated crops such as strawberry and potato and helped reduce frost damage to the plants. Therefore, crop yield was higher. In this case, the genetically modified bacteria was even safer than the bacteria found in nature. But, using genetically modified bacteria, like any other issue, comes with risks as well as benefits. And because of these risks, there are many people who do not support the use of genetically engineered bacteria. One reason is bacteria are not limited to species-specific gene exchange. Gene exchange can happen between unrelated microorganisms and also between microorganisms and eukaryotes. Another reason is new bacteria evolve rapidly, which can result in novel diseases and pests. The genetically modified bacteria may displace natives, harm other species in the environment, and damage the ecosystems they are introduced to by leaving toxic residues or changing nutrient cycling. Bacteria can also never be exterminated if environmental or health problems become evident once released into the environment. Since bacteria are found everywhere, the repercussions can be substantial and irreversible. One example of bacteria exchanging genes to native organisms is in the Gulf of Mexico. Oil-eating bacteria introduced to the Gulf to try to clean up the environment have caused mutations to occur in other bacteria. In addition to causing all sorts of bacteria to mutate, these oil-eating bacteria are spreading throughout the oceans, threatening to damage other ecosystems. This crisis is also causing human health problems. Due to the multitude of colonized bacteria, some people have experienced respiratory complications, skin complications, or gastrointestinal symptoms. Another environmental risk of genetically modified bacteria being introduced into the environment is the possibility of making superweeds. Also, the genetically modified rhizobian bacteria can inoculate weeds like clover and mesquite. 
Rhizobium enhances a plant's nitrogen supply, leading to the weed thriving. Genetically modified bacteria can also pass on antibiotic resistance to human pathogens. Another reason is that pharmaceutical products produced by bacteria are not identical to naturally occurring products. For example, the human insulin derived from transgenic bacteria possesses subtle differences in its molecular structure compared to natural insulin. The structural differences may make the insulin less biologically active and even cause harm to the person using the drug. Other reasons are based on people's religious values. Some people argue that genetic modification distorts an organism's telos, or essential nature. Others think every gene is a part of the complex web of life, and moving it from one place to another will disrupt the balance of nature. Others say that genetically modifying an organism is not a human's job. Yet, others think it is alright to genetically modify bacteria because of several reasons. One reason is that bacteria cannot feel pain and suffering during experimentation. Another is that genetic engineering speeds the development of new antibiotics. Also, measures are being taken to reduce the risk of genetically modified bacteria in the environment. Secondary effects of transformation caused by the random insertion of transgenes into the genome can cause reduction of fitness and thus make transgenic bacteria less of a risk in the environment. Most of the bacteria used to benefit humans are used to make pharmaceuticals and they are contained in labs. Because the benefits do outweigh the risks, it is right to genetically modify bacteria.